We're going to get underway. Uh, we have played the national anthem, um, and I'm sorry if you weren't able to hear that, uh, but we're going to keep uh, moving with our Remembrance Day service. Uh, for those who don't know me, which I'm sure is most of you, my name is Reverend Andrew Price, uh, Senior Minister of Holy Trinity, Doncaster. It's my pleasure to MC today's service. I'd like to, like to welcome the Honourable Kevin Andrews, MP, Federal Member for Menzies, at leading senior constable Carla Reardon from Victoria Police, Doncaster Rotary President Barry Halpern, Doncaster RSL President Charles Collins, other distinguished guests, members of the RSL and families who are watching on Zoom due to the COVID restrictions. I'd also like to thank Martha Clark and the community for our amazing knitted and crocheted poppy display, which you can see either side of me. And there are some on the ground as well. More than 600 uh, have been made for this occasion, which is terrific. Well, let me pray briefly before we continue with our service. Our gracious God, we thank you that as your son Jesus Christ laid down his life for us that we may enjoy peace with you, so many young Australians laid down their lives for us that we may enjoy peace in our country. So on this day, we thank you for their bravery and we remember their sacrifice. May we continue to work to maintain the peace they won for us. Bradshaw and on behalf of my school co-captain Jack Charlton it is our honour to represent Kerry Baptist Grandma Donville and to take part in the Doncaster RSL Remembrance Day service. Early on the morning of May 3rd 1915 John McQuay sat really near his field dressing station, a crude bunker cut into the slopes of the bank near the Ypres Issa Canal in Belgium. A Canadian military surgeon He'd been at the French line for 12 days under relentless German bombardment, and the toll of dead and wounded had been appalling. From his position on the road along the canal running into the Ypres, McCray wrote, I saw all the tragedies of war enacted. A wagon or a bunch of horses or a stray man will get there just in time for a shell. One could see the absolute knockout, or worse yet, at night, one could hear the tragedy, or horses scream, or the man's moan. The field where the cemetery lay was thick with scarlet poppies, their dormant seeds churned up by the guns, blooming despite or because of the carnage. McCrae took in the scene and quickly wrote a 15-line poem, speaking as from the dead to the living, in Flanders fields, was to become the most famous poem of the Great War, perhaps of any war. It is now my pleasure to invite Carrie Donvale's Junior School Council representatives Laney Raybar and Noah Dor Smith to read in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with, with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow. In Flanders fields, by John McRae. Thank you, Laney and Noah. No symbol so strongly recalls the Great War as the poppy. It is to the force in every ceremony and parade on Remembrance Day. Every year, tens of millions of paper poppies are assembled. Their bright red colours catch the eye of both people and monuments on the 11th of November. For the poppy has many aspects to it, wild yet lasting, whittling but also uplifting. For John McRae, the poppy kept alive the memory of a young generation that was nipped in the bud before it could bloom. More than a hundred years after its creation, John McRae's poem, In Flanders Fields, lives on as a cornerstone of Remembrance Day, lest we forget. Wow. 
Well, I'd uh, like now to invite the Honourable Kevin Andrews to come and say some words. Uh, Reverend Andrew Price, uh, Mr. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. For the past 101 years, we've gathered at cenotaphs around Australia and throughout the British Commonwealth and elsewhere around the world to remark Remembrance Day, a day in which we pause to reflect upon the sacrifices made by so many people in the cause of justice and liberty. The first Remembrance Day, named Armistice Day, was held in London in 1919, the suggestion of an Australian journalist who was working at Fleet Street at the time. And since then, and with the encouragement of the then monarch, Remembrance Day services have been held not just in the UK, but right throughout the British Commonwealth. Indeed, here in Australia and in New Zealand. So at hamlets and villages, in towns and cities, right throughout Australia, people like us are pausing to reflect upon the sacrifices that so many have made in the past. And why is it that the Great War, the First World War, had such an impact on the psyche of the people of Australia and continues to do so more than a century later? The sheer statistics tell the story. Australia's population at the time of the Great War was just four million people. Of that four million people, some 417,000 enlisted to fight in the Great War. Of that 417,000, 225,000 were either killed or injured. One in ten Australians volunteered to enlist in the Great War. Four in ten Australian males between the age of 18 and 44 enlisted to fight in the Great War. The casualty rate was enormous. Almost 60,000 killed, 167,000 injured, many lost and never returned, some still in unknown graves on the Somme, on the Western Front, at Gallipoli and elsewhere of that great conflict. So the Great War had an enormous impact on the psyche of this nation, this young nation, Australia. It was our gravest conflict, our first conflict as a nation, the first opportunity in which Australians had to stand up on an international stage to fight for the dignity of individuals and for freedom and justice. And so we remember them today, a century later. We also remember those brave Australians who fought in subsequent wars and conflicts in the Second World War, in Korea, in Malaya, in Vietnam, in Afghanistan, in Iraq and other places around the world right up until this day. We salute each of those who have served this country, not just those who served in uniform but the nurses as well and those who gave comfort to Australian soldiers wherever they were. And we also pause to honour those men and women of the Australian Defence Forces who serve in uniform today to try and ensure that peace is retained throughout the world. So it's appropriate that a century later, we here at Doncaster pause to reflect those from this then small farming community who went overseas and gave their lives, and those who returned injured and always affected by that great war. We remember them this day because it's the appropriate thing to do. May we also, may we always continue to remember those who have served this country and will serve this country in the future, lest we forget. Thank you very much for those words. We're going to now say the ode. Uh, you can say it along with us. It's on your invitation uh, that hopefully you would have received. Together, they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. We're going to hear the last post played now, which will be followed by a minute's silence. 
and then the laying of wreaths 